Right, today we have a Series 2 that's been a home restoration and the customer has actually had the car running to find the next time he started it one of the valves has stuck in the head. Uh, so we are going to strip it down today and try to show you how this job can be processed through its first stage. First item we need to do now is to drain the water from the system. Undoing the tap on the radiator. Some items have already been removed, as in the nuts, but we've left them in place for physical viewing. Uh, so now I can eat, just pull the exhaust manifolds away due to the fact that they were undone previously. The same stands with the rocket covers, they have already been unbolted to try and speed this process up. As you can see, somebody previously has used a lot of sealer, quite excessive quantity, uh, which finally allows it to start to get into the workings of the engine, which we would certainly not recommend. If sealer is used, which we all know these rocket cover gaskets do have a tendency to weep, uh, it is a case of the finest little smear of Holomar or equivalent materials. And finally, removing the air filters, which show me that this carburetor is actually overfueling itself due to the fact it's coming out of the uh, intake venturi when it hasn't even been running. And this is actually running down the fuel lines as we can see. We will have to address that fuel issue with the fuel float levels being adjusted after we've addressed the cylinder head. Okay, just removing the last spark plug now so that we can make turning the engine out over easier to be able to get to the bolts holding the front cam pulleys on. Right, we now need to cut the lock wire that holds the two cam bolts from being able to physically turn if, heaven forbid, they tried to, be, to loosen themselves during running. turn the engine over to bring that closer to cut the other part. Spark plugs have been removed to make this an easier operation.
Okay, so I'm now after removing the lock wire, remove the two bolts that are holding the front cam pulleys. Be obviously careful to try to make sure that you get them in a position you can handle them properly so that you don't lose them down there. One item that is imperative I say around the workshop is label all the items, get yourself some freezer bags, you can write on them exactly what parts have come from what part of the engine. We can't turn this particular engine any further at this point to get this other bolt easily due to the fact that the stuck valve has now made it that the piston can't come up anymore so we would have preferred to have turned this a little bit further around but we've got to work around the challenge. So shortly by writing on them what bolts are what and now the pulleys can be moved forward they shall then be moved inwards like that to allow the cylinder head to raise above it okay we're just removing the last of the head nuts from the studs a, there is a sequence to slacken off along with the same for tightening in reverse order just to spread the head evenly but we can get into that when we get to the point of putting it all back together Okay, we shall now move to undo the rear oil feed return, well not feed, return pipe from the back of the heads. Okay, as mentioned, now just undoing the oil return pipes off the back of the head. Make sure you remember when refitting there are two copper washers on these banjo unions. We shall now turn to release the fuel lines. conversation you can hear in the background is actually a customer talking to staff regarding the e-type that we are doing the bare metal respray on but that okay. right now that the water level has dropped 
below the required level, well, has been drained. We'll now undo the coolant hose. Sometimes needing a little bit of prying from the union they have sat. We shall also undo the advance and retard pipe from the distributor to the carburetors. Disconnected from the rubber tube that's been put on the other end of the distributor on the vacuum unit. Join us now as we're removing the last stud that has relented and allowed us to take it out. The remaining six studs haven't, but we're, uh, we have got access to the head is now rocking. I've pulled both cam gears together to give us access as the head lifts. There are a couple of other items being removed or slackened off out of the way. Uh, we didn't show you those. For obvious trying not to lose your interest in this project. Right, I now need John to come along and give me a lift to help get the head off due to its bulk and weight. And thank you, John. Okay, we can just place it. Okay, thank you. Blackened off the camshafts, and it is now imperative that these caps are all kept in order. They are actually numbered on the cap and the head. This one stating number two, number two, and the numbers when refitting have got to match with the side that that number has been stamped due to the way that they are machined. Okay, we shall now finish removing the camshafts and turn the head over. Okay, we've now removed the cams and the carburetors, etc. And here is the offending bent valve that has got stuck and then been clobbered by the uh, piston as it came up. With the Jaguars having down pistons, it was able to obviously catch it. So there we go, hopefully you will join us when we do a bit more work on it next time. Thank you.